Good evening. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. In tonight's story, we follow a magical journey of a young artist who lives in the beautiful Rome who meets one of her heroes. Or does she? After the story, the sounds and music will continue to play so they can accompany you as you move deeper and deeper into sleep. If you haven't already, I'd be really grateful if you could subscribe to my channel and give the video a thumbs up. This, of course, helps others to find out about my channel. It also means that I'll keep making these stories for you to fall asleep to. So I guess you can see it as a way of passing it on. Now let's get relaxed. Make yourself comfortable in your bed. Adjust your pillow and tuck yourself in. Close your eyes whenever you feel ready. Place your arms and legs in a position that is comfortable for you, where you can relax completely. Your feet are relaxed and loosened. Your back and head also find a position that is comfortable for you. Now, feel your breath. Notice how your chest rises and falls in and out. Relaxation comes all by itself. All sounds around you flow past you. They help you to relax more and more. You hear the sound of my voice. It relaxes you deeper and deeper. Now I'm going to count down from ten to one, and as I do, you allow yourself to let go more and more. You sink from ten down to nine, and let go more and more, nine, you feel a deep calm and serenity, bring you to eight, a comforting and relaxed feeling spreads throughout your body with seven. Deep harmony fills you with six. Notice the silence.
five lets you sink down further. Four helps you to let go and everything around you becomes softer and gentler. Let it happen with number three and let it flow. With two, you are released and free. Two gives you time. Time for yourself. Time for relaxation. One helps you to go deep, deep into your world of fantasy, to let your imagination flow. The young artist wandered through the narrow streets of Rome. She deeply loved this place. As she passed by the ancient buildings and ruins, she always felt filled with complete awe. She had seen these ruins and buildings hundreds of times, but they never got old for her. The city seemed to hum with a vibrancy and energy that she always loved to witness. On this particular day, she had decided to visit the Vatican for the first time. Although she'd lived in Rome for years, she'd never made it to this amazing place. She found herself standing in St. Peter's Square, looking up at the massive dome of St. Peter's Basilica. The air was filled with the sounds of distant bells and the murmur of tourists from all over the world. She couldn't wait to go in and discover all of the treasures deep within this amazing place. The air inside was cool and still, filled with the scent of old stone and burning candles. She wandered through the great halls, taking in the ornate paintings and sculptures that surrounded her. She found herself amazed by some of the ancient artifacts. The fact that humans, thousands of years ago, had been so advanced as to create such mesmerizing objects completely baffled her, but inspired her at the same time. She just wished that she could translate this inspiration onto canvas. You see, lately, she had been struggling with being able to create. The creative part of her that made her an artist wasn't working for some reason. This was part of the reason she had come here to look and see, to breathe and smell, to seek and find. After some time, she found herself in the Raphael rooms. She listened to her audio guide which spoke of Raphael spending weeks and months 
in these very rooms, painting these giant frescoes. She looks to a particular spot and sees that Raphael has painted the great artist Michelangelo into his fresco, perhaps a nod of respect to a fellow artist. This place is awash with human creativity, and the young artist was completely blown away. Soon she was standing in front of the entrance to the Sistine Chapel. She steps inside. The room is filled with people and security guards telling people to be quiet. She admires, of course, the world-renowned ceiling painted by Michelangelo. But part of her wishes that she could experience this place alone. She stood in the center of the room, gazing up at the magnificent ceiling. She was in awe of the intricate details and the vibrant colors that covered every inch of it. As she stared, she found herself transported back in time, imagining what it would have been like to be here 500 years ago. She closed her eyes, trying to picture Michelangelo delicately painting each bit of this amazing ceiling. Her audio guide tells her that Michelangelo often worked at night, alone with his thoughts and the flickering light of a flame. She tried to imagine the silence that enveloped him as he worked, the concentration that must have been upon him. She wondered how he even reached those heights and how he managed to create such incredible works of art with nothing but his hands and a brush. In many ways, she wished she could visit those days to witness that long gone world for herself. She longed to experience the sights, the sounds, and the smells of Rome in the Renaissance. To see what the streets look like and the markets. To hear the sounds of horses and carriages passing by. And to smell the scents of fresh bread and spices, and other smells of that world. The young artist 
returned to her little apartment. Still lost in thought from her visit to the Sistine Chapel. As she lay in bed, she reflected on her current state as an artist. The inspiration that she couldn't find was remaining elusive. She remembered how she had started out so well when she was younger, filled with hope and creativity. But lately, it felt like she didn't even know why she was an artist anymore. She felt unable to move forward or to create anything meaningful. As she closed her eyes, she took some deep breaths. In and out. In and out, and she allowed herself to become very present, listening to the distant sounds of the city outside her window, the gentle hum of voices and the distant sound of music from a nearby cafe drifted through the warm night air. It was a magical time in Rome, and she felt so lucky to live there. She moved deeper and deeper towards sleep, and as she drifted off, she hoped that the memories of her visit to the Sistine Chapel would stay with her. and that they would help her to find the inspiration that she so desperately craved. As she began to dream, the young artist found herself wandering through the streets of Rome once again. But this time, something was different. The ancient buildings looked familiar, but the streets looked unfamiliar, as if she had been transported to another time entirely. She walked cautiously, but she felt completely safe, and as she walked, she noticed that the people around her were dressed in clothing from another era. They spoke in a language that she couldn't understand, 
and the sounds of the city were different too. The clanging of blacksmith's hammers and the clip-clop of horses' hooves filled the air. The smells of wood smoke mingled with the scent of freshly baked bread. Despite her confusion, she felt a sense of excitement building within her. This was a Rome she had never seen before. A world that existed only in her dreams. She walked on, marveling at the sights and sounds around her, and wondering what other surprises were in store. As the young artist wandered further through the unfamiliar streets of Rome, she eventually caught sight of something very familiar to her the Vatican. Despite the darkness of the night, the building seemed to glow in the moonlight, beckoning her forward. She felt a sense of relief wash over her at the sight of something she recognized, and she quickened her pace towards it. As she approached, she noticed that the Vatican looked different. Some buildings were familiar but some had changed or weren't there. The colors of the stone in the nighttime and the intricate details of the architecture seemed to be more vibrant and alive than they had been earlier in the day. The blanket of stars above her made her feel safe and protected, as if she was exactly where she was meant to be. She walked up to the entrance of the Vatican and was surprised to find that it was unlocked. As she entered, she felt a sense of peace and serenity that she had never felt before. The halls were empty and quiet The only sounds was the gentle creaking of the wooden floors beneath her feet. She made her way through the halls, following her intuition as she went. Finally, she emerged into the Sistine Chapel once again, 
this time, however, it looked different. The colors of Michelangelo's paintings were more vivid than she remembered, and the figures seemed almost to be alive. She walked up to the altar, feeling a sense of awe at the beauty of this place. And as she looked up at the ceiling, she saw a man painting and drawing with his brush and black chalk, standing atop a scaffolding. She was a little surprised and let out a little gasp, which alerted the man to her presence. For a moment, they both stood there in silence, staring at each other across the expanse of the chapel. The only sound was the gentle flickering from the flames on the torches that lined the walls. Then, the man spoke. Who are you? How did you get in here? He asked, his voice echoing through the empty chapel. The young artist hesitated, unsure of how to respond. I'm sorry she finally managed to say. I didn't mean to intrude. I was just admiring your work. The figure on the scaffolding looked at her, then seemed to relax slightly. I suppose it's all right, he said. He made his way down the scaffolding and walked towards the young artist, studying her face intently. She looked back at him, struck by the intensity of his gaze. As he approached, she noticed the lines etched into his face, evidence of a life well lived. What brings you here? He asked. I haven't met you before, I don't think. The young artist hesitated, unsure of how to respond. She didn't want to be a nuisance. There was something about this man that made her feel very comfortable and safe, as if he understood her struggles on a level that no one else could. I'm an artist too, she said finally but I haven't been able to paint anything in months. I'm completely stuck, and I don't know what to do. The man nodded slowly, as if he understood her struggles all too well. 
I know how that feels, he said. Sometimes the inspiration just isn't there. No matter how hard we try to find it. But I found that the most important thing is to keep creating. Even when it feels like nothing is coming out right. The act of making something, anything, can be enough to get the gears turning again. The young artist listened intently, feeling a glimmer of hope ignite within her. She had heard similar advice before, but something about the way this man spoke made it feel more profound. She wondered who he was and why he seemed so wise and mysterious. Was he the great man himself? Was this a dream? Was he a student of the great man? She didn't know. Thank you, she said softly. That's really helpful. Can I ask you something? Who are you? The man smiled at her, his eyes twinkling in the candlelight. Just a fellow artist, he said. But remember, everything starts with the drawing. They call me Michelangelo. Michelangelo, she repeated, her voice barely above a whisper. The man nodded, a smile playing at the corners of his lips. Yes, that's what they call me, he said. But don't let the name intimidate you. I'm just another human like any other. The young artist couldn't quite believe it. She had entered a room with one of the greatest artists that ever lived, and he was giving her advice on her own struggles with creativity. She wondered if this was all just a dream, or if she had truly been transported back in time. Thank you, she said again. I can't believe I'm talking to Michelangelo. The artist chuckled. The sound, deep and rich. Well, believe it, he said. And remember, if you ever need inspiration, just come back here. This chapel has a way of reminding us of what's important. The young artist nodded. She knew that this encounter would stay with her for the rest of her life.
then the young artist and the older artist sat in silence for a while, enjoying the peaceful atmosphere of the Sistine Chapel at night. as if she was exactly where she was meant to be. Then Michelangelo broke the silence. You know, he said, his voice low and thoughtful. Sometimes I think that art is like a flame. It can be powerful and bright, or it can flicker and die out. But no matter what, it always has the power to light the way. The young artist nodded, feeling a sense of understanding growing within her. She had always believed that art was important, but hearing Michelangelo put it into words made it feel even more significant. I like that, she said softly. It's like we're all carrying a little bit of that flame inside us. And it's up to us to keep it burning. Michelangelo smiled at her his eyes crinkling with warmth. Exactly, he said. And the key is to keep adding fuel to the fire. Keep creating. Keep pushing yourself and never give up. That's the only way to keep the flame burning bright. As the young artist prepared to say goodbye to Michelangelo, she felt a twinge of sadness. She didn't want this encounter to end. To leave behind the mentorship and inspiration that he had offered her. But Michelangelo seemed to understand her thoughts without a word being spoken and he reached into his pocket 
and pulled out a piece of black chalk. Here, take this, he said, handing the chalk to her. Remember, it all starts with the drawing. The young artist took the chalk, feeling the weight of it in her hand. It was a simple gift, but one that carried so much meaning. She knew that this little piece of chalk would serve as a reminder of everything that Michelangelo had taught her, of the importance of starting with the basics and building from there. Thank you, she said softly. The great artist smiled at her. His eyes filled with warmth. Remember, you have everything you need inside of you, he said. Just keep creating and never give up. That's the key to success. The young artist nodded, feeling a sense of determination growing within her. She knew that there would be challenges ahead, but with Michelangelo's words, and this little piece of chalk to guide her. She felt more equipped to face them. As she made her way out of the Sistine Chapel that night, she knew that she would never forget this encounter, and that she had been given a gift that few others had ever received. She clutched the chalk tightly in her hand, feeling the weight of it, and vowed to use it to create something truly beautiful. As she walked back through the streets of 1500s Rome, she felt a sense of wonder and inspiration that she had never experienced before. The city was just as beautiful as she had imagined it would be. With its winding streets and majestic architecture The young artist felt grateful towards Michelangelo. He had given her so much more than just advice. He had shown her a new way of seeing the world. A way of seeing beauty 
in even the most ordinary of things. The moon shone down on Rome, and as she walked, she began to notice the details around her more fully than before. The way light played across the cobblestones, the way shadows danced along the walls. She knew this was just the beginning of her journey and that there would be many challenges and obstacles along the way. But with Michelangelo's words echoing in her mind, she felt more equipped to face them. She knew that the flame inside her was burning brighter than ever before and that she would do everything in her power to keep it alive. The next morning She opened her eyes and felt refreshed and full of energy. She lay in her bed for a moment. She thought back on the previous night's events. It had all felt so vivid and real, but at the same time, it seemed impossible that she could have actually met Michelangelo. Must have been a dream, she thought to herself smiling at the memory. But then, she turned on her side and saw the black piece of chalk sitting on her nightstand. And everything came rushing back. The conversation with Michelangelo, the dimly lit Sistine Chapel, the advice he had given her, Rome in 1510, and the gift of the chalk, it had all really happened. The young artist felt a sense of excitement wash over her. She knew that she had been given a rare opportunity and she was determined to make the most of it. She got out of bed feeling a sense of purpose that she hadn't felt in months. She walked over to her easel, bringing the chalk with her. Everything starts with the drawing, 
she whispered to herself, echoing Michelangelo's words. With that, she began to create the chalk gliding effortlessly across the paper as if guided by some unseen force. She felt a sense of joy and freedom that she had forgotten existed, as if she had been given permission to create without limitations. She knew that this little piece of chalk was more than just a tool. It was a symbol of everything she had learned from her meeting with Michelangelo.